Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning, and welcome to worship at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura. I am Worship Associate Rob March, and I am joined by Lily Rappaport, Acting Director of Family Ministry, and presenting today's service. I welcome all of you, both, of those, both those of you here in the sanctuary and those elsewhere and joining us via the wonders of technology to worship with UUCV. A few announcements. We ask that people without masks leave the section of seats near the open windows available for individuals who will be more comfortable being among other masked worshipers. Thank you for your consideration in this regard. People are invited to stay today for a congregational conversation on next year's budget at 1130 in Berg Hall through the doors over there. On a related note, the annual meeting at which we elect officers approve the operating budget and other items will be June 11th at 1130 also in Berg Hall. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, I'm sorry, the meeting at 11.30 is in here. So uh, that will not interrupt your coffee and bagels. <laughs> um, let me remind you to refer to the announcements in the weekly email message, UUCB this week for current announcements. Now, let us enter sacred space. I invite those who are Zooming or streaming into the service to light a chalice or candle at home while we light the chalice of our free faith here in the sanctuary. We light this chalice to find inner peace, love for each other, and faith in ourselves. Also, to be welcoming to whomever is in need, whoever we meet, and kind to all living creatures. So gather around this light of hope as we share this time together. My name is Lily Rappaport, and I'm the Acting Director of Family Ministry. We gather here in community, people of all ages, on many paths, elders, adults, young adults, youth, and children. We who gather here, what do we seek? We who gather here, why have we come together? We who gather here, what purpose has this community? We gather here to share in our lives, to minister to each other, to teach, to learn, to love. Today we gather in celebration of our all ages community to honor transitions, especially the transitions of the three high school senior, seniors who are bridging into adulthood today. We gather today to affirm our commitment to them and their ministries. Our call to worship this morning are the words by Issei M. Barnwell from Honey in the Rock. We are. For each child that's born, 
A morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are our grandmother's prayers and our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We are mothers of courage and fathers of time. We are daughters of dust and the sons of great vision. We are sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are lovers of life and builders of nations. We are seekers of truth and keepers of faith, makers of peace and wisdom of ages. Come, let us worship together. This is the bridging service where we will recognize the transitions or the bridges that occur throughout our lives. Today, we celebrate and honor the transition of three of our graduating high school senior youth as they bridge into young adulthood. It is a heartfelt tradition of this church to sing out the children each and every week. Today, we're also going to welcome our children and youth up to the front as we sing our opening hymn, Come, Come, Whoever You Are. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please rise and body your spirit, and we will sing Come, Come, Whoever You Are three times as the children come forward. Today's story has some very um, important narrators. This is the story of the traveler who discovers the road is not only a metaphor for life's journey, but also a supportive and wise friend accompanying him or her on their path and helping them find their way into the future. now read What the Road Said by Cleo, Cleo Wade. If you ever wanted to go in a different direction, have you, ever wanted, have you ever wondered if there was something more, something out there, something just different? I did too. Then one day I was walking my usual way home when out of nowhere, for no reason at all, almost as if it were magic, a road appeared. I could not believe my eyes, so I walked over to it and I said to the road, where do you lead? The road said, be a leader and find out. How do I start, I asked. The road smiled and said, you have already started. Well, what happens when I get there? We have just begun, said the road. Do not skip straight to the ending. Enjoy the beginning and the middle too. Which way do I go? This is your choice to make, said the road. But what if I go the wrong way? The road, curved, the road curved a little, almost as if to giving me a hug, and said, do not worry. Sometimes we go the wrong way or on our way to the right way. What if I get scared? This is OK. You are brave, said the road. But what does it mean to be brave, I asked. The road guided me through a very gloomy forest. Even though I, fri I was frightened, I traveled the road. And as I took one step and then another step, after that, the road gently whispered, 
Being brave is when you are afraid of doing something, but you do it anyway. Do not let what scares you keep you away from continuing on your path. Will I always move forward? Not always, said the road. Why not? Because sometimes you will stumble backwards and sometimes you will stand still. What if I fall? Everyone falls at some point, said the road, but I will always be there when you land. What if I get lost? There may be some days that you feel long, that feel long and dark, said the road, but I promise that no matter what, I will give you the evening stars and the morning sun to light your way. What if I grow weary or get hurt? I will give you the trees of all shapes and sizes to shelter you when you need to rest and heal, said the road. What if I get lonely? You were never alone, said the road. What if I change? Come with me, said the road. And as I moved forward, the road introduced me to a caterpillar and a family of seeds. We did not stay long. The road began taking me on a journey through the seasons. I watched summer turn into fall, fall turn to winter, and as spring was upon us, I realized we had gone in one big, beautiful circle. I looked down and I found I was standing in front of a caterpillar and the seeks once more. Only the caterpillar was no longer a caterpillar and the seeds had turned into flowers of every color swaying in the sun. The road then raised me up and said, all things grow and change. That is the magic of being alive. You too will find your wings. You too will bloom. No living thing is meant to stay the same. What if I need help on my journey? Ask your fellow, fellow travelers along the way. What if they are mean to me? Lead them to kindness, said the road. How? By being kind. What if they want to fight? Lead them to peace, said the road. But how do I lead them to peace? By listening to their stories, telling them yours, and reminding them that you are all on this journey together. What if the world around us is filled with hate? Lead it to love. How? by sharing the power of your love with it, said the road. What if something unexpected happens? Keep going. What if there are mountains that feel too tall to climb? What if there are rivers that feel too wide to cross? What if I, feel, what if I get my heart broken? What if I feel stuck? What if giving up is easier? Keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, said the road. What if I can't do it? You can, said the road. How do you know? Because you have come this far, said the road. I said to the road, where do you lead? The road said, be a leader and find out. Thank you, Bridgers, for your reading. And now, we're going to have a bridge set up to sing our children out. So if you would, in the, um, on the aisle there, stand up and hands to together as we sing our children to the class. One of the ways we here in this congregation build a kinder, more loving, more equitable world is by giving away our collection each Sunday to an organization in the larger community or to funds that help people in our own church. Those at home have two ways to give, through the link posted in the chat or by texting from your phone at the, at the number shown. Folks who are present in the sanctuary can text to give or you can still write a check or give cash and then drop it in the basket in the back of the sanctuary after the service. Our offering today goes to our Lift Up Your Voice to End Homelessness Family to Family team 
to provide lunch on the first Monday of each, each month to some 120 of our homeless neighbors. This month, our team of volunteers will be serving a delicious meal of chicken marinara, salad, garlic bread, fruit, pie, and assorted beverages. There will be toiletries and donated clothing for folks to take away with them, and lots of time to visit and enjoy a hot, nutritious meal with friends. UUCV is partnering with the Center for Spiritual Living, and more volunteers are needed. Please talk to Sue Brinkmeyer for more in information. We deeply appreciate your generosity in supporting this program, uh, the programs that help create a more loving world. We are so grateful for the generosity of this congregation, which helps us weave a tapestry of love we call community. Now is the time in the service when we hold up the great joys and sorrows that grace our lives. We place stones in water for both the celebrations and sorrows in our hearts making ripples that are felt throughout our community. You can submit a joy or sorrow for sharing via a link on the website, uuventura.org, or a link in our Thursday email bulletin, UUCV This Week. Those received by 8 p.m. on Saturday will be shared that Sunday. 
Here are the joys and sorrows shared this week. A joy from Dave Davis and Carrie Davis, who, uh, who welcomed a healthy new baby grandson this week, their eighth grandchild. He was born in Seattle and named Zagrus. He has reddish hair, the color of Dave's beard used to be. <laughs> we, are very great, we are very happy and excited and can't wait to get to fly up and meet him soon. Joyce Lombard has a joy. Joyce and her two daughters and one other granddaughter traveled to Fort Collins, Colorado to celebrate Elisa Villanau's Master of Arts degree in Occupational Therapy from Colorado State University. Three generations of women aged 21 to 87, along with dad, Mike, ate good food and shared lots of memories. Safety protocol was in place in the gymnasium during the event. A joy from George and Ruth Owens. Hallelujah. We have finally sold our Michigan house. We are still trying to figure out how such a generous offer of love, trust, and opportunity went so horribly wrong. We are so grateful to be out from under the nightmare of that house. It really is true that people don't value what they didn't work to get. <laughs> Glad to have the stress over and looking forward to getting back to a normal life. Party begins today. I invite you now to speak into the gathered community or write into the Zoom chat the names of those you wish to celebrate or memorialize or those in need of the loving embrace of this beloved community. Please feel free to continue to add to the chat even after the silent pause has ended. Janice will now place one final stone in the water for all the joys and sorrows yet unspoken in the silent sanctuary of our hearts. May we be truly grateful for all that is our life. Years ago, we had a different bridging song than the one we sang today, earlier. It's uh, Wait and See. And so our middle hymn today is going to be Wait and see, we will sing it two times through, just like we used to when the kids were little. You can remain seated. So do you Bridgers remember being sung out with, those, with that song? We wanted to play that song today just to kind of memorialize or remember the way that things used to be. And so we're bridging the past with the present, the songs that we sing today, and also just wondering what's out there in the future. We gather here today in our religious community to celebrate the rite of passage. <laughs> the rite of passage, um, the transition of three young people as they move into adulthood. Unitarian Universalists understand the significant transitions in our lives are to be celebrated and this is one of them. The bridging ceremony is not a farewell, 
but rather a celebration of the blossoming of our most precious resources into full adulthood. This is an opportunity to recognize Amber, Charles, and Noah, to applaud their success thus far, to acknowledge them and to wish them happiness and satisfaction in what is yet to come. It is to make sure they know that we are with them, whether they stay close or they travel far from here. This ritual also honors the dedication of this religious community to provide a liberal spiritual home for our children. We recognize the love of families, the commitment of teachers, advisors, and mentors, and the steadfast support given in time, money, and love invested in each one of you. We will take one moment now from the congregation and the acknowledgement of your interest in helping raise these individuals as they move from children on up as they are today into young adulthood. If you have held a hand in the religious upbringing of these bridging youth, if you were a teacher, an advisor, or a mentor, or a caretaker, please stand as you are willing or raise your hand so that we can demonstrate and show our love from the years, the many years. Stay standing. And that was something very much to be proud of. So thank you for standing and showing yourselves. Um, in particular, the parents wanted to recognize the involvement of the entire community into this special day that we're going to be honoring in the transition of these young adults. So um, I'm going to invite, there's going to be an opportunity for all the parents to say their wishes to their youth um, before we will finally hear from the youth. So I'm going to invite the first set of, I'll invite the Gales to come up and deliver your wishes. And, and before you go, we're going to, before you show a video. Oh, okay. do you want me to stay? You stay could stay there. right there. Your dad and I love you dearly. We're so grateful to have you in our lives. We appreciate your eye for beauty and your love of the natural world. Since you were a toddler, we've been able to share your enjoyment of a smell of a flower and your intrigue at the touch of a plant. 
we remember time spent beachcombing and exploring the tide pools. The time you found a sand dollar no bigger than a dime. Sunsets shared at Rincon Park. More treasured family me memories include Davidaville Family Camp, exploring the creek at Camp Comfort, and joyfully pointing out the frogs, birds, and plants living there. Making potato pancakes with you. Your amazing cake decorations. Watching you make your tasty, beautiful cakes and desserts, and then helping you eat them. We also appreciate the joy and wonder you bring to our family traditions. Even as a teen, you'd wear a Santa hat, holiday sweater, red striped socks, and a bright smile of joy as we decorated the Christmas tree year after year. You have brightened our home. We are so proud of your academic achievements and the hard work and dedication it took to achieve them. We admire your integrity. As the, um, <clears throat> as the circumference of your world grows wider and the rivers of your life run deeper, nourish your creative spirit. Remember to treat yourself with kindness and respect and always listen to the song in your heart. We love you so very much. So Charlie, I know you prefer Charles now, but you'll always be Charlie to me. Um, <laughs> there's, there's about a million things I'd like to say, uh, but I promised I'd be brief, so I just want to say two. Um, one is something I probably don't tell you enough, which is what a great, wonderful son you've been, um, and how proud I am of everything that you've achieved. And uh, um, the second thing is um, I hope that as you move through life, you can find uh, communities like this one to help support you. Um, and I know you are, you were too young to remember this now, but um, uh, back when, when you were just a couple years old and we first started coming here, um, uh, the, probably the first person you bonded with outside of our family was Tom Berg. And uh, come, we'd come every week and you and he would just kind of get to it and start playing and hanging out and it was, it was great. Um, and since then, there have been people like David Henkel, Janice, um, 
uh, Gary Zinnick, uh, Alexandra Zinnick. Um, and uh, so I can't wait to see what you get up to in the years to come, and uh, I hope you'll have the support of people like that. Um, so this may be a little trite, but there's an African proverb that was made popular by Hillary Clinton that says it takes a village to raise a child. And when um, Charlie and his sister Sophie were young, this church really was our village. Uh, this building was like a second home to Charlie. Uh, he doesn't remember much from those early years, but I remember Charlie and Amber playing hide and seek in the coffee hour in Berg Hall, much to the dismay of people, people actually holding coffee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Eric mentioned Charlie's connection to Tom Berg, but another memory that I have that was really strong is that when uh, we went to the fair one time when Charlie was about four, um, and we were just leaving, um, we'd been there for a few hours, and uh, Charlie and Sophie were walking just a little ahead of Eric and I, and all of a sudden Charlie sprints away, and I panic because we're at the fair, there's a million people around, I'm going, I'm going to lose my child. And he had seen Reverend Jan, and he had run up and just given her this big, huge hug. And anybody that knows Charlie knows he's not a hugger. Um, and so this is a big deal, right? That was a, a really tight connection that he had to this church. Um, and so through all sorts of ways, through our E classes and OWL and our child care co-op and uh, everything we did around the church, this church really centered our family amongst a community that shared our values. Um, and so through this church, Charlie learned many things that I think will make him well-suited and ready to take the next step in his life. He, he became an independent thinker. He learned to have conversations about hard topics um, in respectful ways. He learned that our way isn't the only way. And maybe most importantly, he learned how to be introspective. And so Charlie, I'm so immensely proud of all that you've accomplished and even more proud of the person that you've become. Um, I'm gonna miss you terribly when you go to school. But um, I know you're ready for the challenge and uh, you have all the tools you need to be successful. And when it gets difficult, as things often do, your dad and I will be here to listen and to hug you or give you whatever you need. start by saying how much I love you and care about you. Um, there are a great many things that make you who you are, your kindness, your caring, and your courage amongst them. When times have become rough, you have summoned your strength to see you through. Although the destination wasn't always clear, you stayed on the path. I have so many wishes and dreams for you as you make your way through life. But my biggest dream is to see you use your amazing abilities and your strength and your courage to dream your biggest dreams and make them come true. And to you, UCV, I have deep gratitude for this congregation's love and support 
and the youth program that has been behind NOAA. NOAA has had strong and caring teachers, mentors, and the experience of things like OWL. They're some of the beautiful ways that the, this church has supported the youth and NOAA. And to you, NOAA, some of the things that I admire most about you is your kindness, your curiosity, your wonder, and your sense of persistence. Noah, you teach me to find the humor in life and embrace adventure. It is such a blessing to be your mother and see you blossom, grow into adulthood, and embrace an unlimited future. Hello, Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura. <laughs> For those who don't know me, my name is Amber, and I go to Buena High School. There, I am ASB secretary, a former journalist, and an all-around AP kid. Outside of that, I love art, baking, and gardening. I've been a member of this church for as long as I can remember. I have participated in countless religious education classes, although in recent post-pandemic times, I have scarcely been to church as my life has been filled with obligations. This community is still a large part of my life, just as it once was when I came every Sunday. So standing here before you, I would like to express my gratitude for this experience. When thinking about writing the speech, I couldn't help but think of all of the bridging ceremonies I have witnessed through the years, all of the friends I have watched grow up and take this step, all of the Sunday afternoons I would contemplate my own time to leave, and here it is. This is a big full circle moment for me. There's so much I'm going to remember and carry with me for the rest of my life. I'm going to cherish the memories I made at yearly church picnics 
where we would go and ice block down the hill at Arroyo Verde Park, the annual Christmas parties where we'd go caroling, and my favorite, flower communion, where the front altar would be filled with vases of top vases of beautiful flowers as diverse as this community. I remember deep conversations that we had in RE, where we'd talk nonstop for what seemed like hours in a way that felt open and true. We sat in the garage couches on our unofficial official seats and were honest about how we felt about life, elections, social norms, and TV shows, always with the treasures, treasured snack right in the middle. I remember all of the outside of the service activities as well. I remember the years of OWL, our whole lives, where I got a world-class sexual education. Coming of age where I contemplated my faith and first spoke in front of this congregation. Crossing paths where I gained a priceless understanding of other religions. Similarly, through this community, my family discovered Camp de Beneville of Pines a multi-UU camp, a multi-church UU camp near Big Bear, our home away from home, and a place I have visited since I was four years old. But most of all, of all of these experiences, I am most grateful for the values I've gained. As a kid growing up in RE, my only exposure to the seven principles was through that one simplified version taught to the tune of Do Re Mi from The Sound of Music. But as I have matured and been exposed to more viewpoints, especially those that I do not appreciate, I have learned how much I align with and love our principles. I'm proud to be part of a community that is so kind, welcoming, and adaptive. I feel like in a small way, this community influenced me towards my life passion and my major in college, environmental science. The respect in this church for environmental causes is clear and clearly influential. Thank you to every person, adult, parent, teacher, and peer who's been a part of my journey. I wouldn't be here without you. You are integral pieces in the fabric of my life. Now as I start the process of moving up north to study environmental science at Cal Poly Humboldt, I would like to leave you with a quote from that famous seven principles song. The line relating to the principle that I will now be devoting college to. The seventh, and possibly my favorite, we care for the earth that brings us back to me and you, you. My name is Charles Prieto, and I'm currently a senior at Foothill High School, and I'll be leaving for Santa Clara University at the end of August. So throughout my entire life, the UU Church has been a home away from home for me. During the day, I would go to religious education where we'd sing songs about the seven principles. And at night, my sister and I would explore a dark church while my mom was in board meetings. <laughs> this continued into my teenage years uh, with programs like Our Whole Lives and Coming of Age. And throughout all these, the church stayed the same. It stayed a place where I could be myself knowing that I would still be accepted. And this acceptance was one of the greatest things the church has given me. It taught me how to be compassionate to other people, regardless of who they are or what opinions they hold. Another thing the church has given me was the opportunity to think about questions I never spent the time to think about before. One example during coming of age was when we were given the instructions to think about our own belief in God. Before this, I never really thought about the question, but the church gave me the time to do so. Sometimes a little too much time, uh, as was the case on a camping trip, <laughs> where we had to spend two hours in an empty circle just thinking. <laughs> so at the end of uh, coming of age, we were supposed to give a speech about our belief in God. And I stood up in the church and said what I had come to realize throughout the entire program. I didn't believe in God. After the speech ended, I had people come up to me to congratulate me on, on it. And that's something I don't think would happen at any other church. <laughs> And it's also what I think the core of the church is. It's unlike any other where anybody, regardless of their beliefs, can be who they are. Here we go. My name is um, Noah Howard, and I am a, a senior at Agora High School. I'm gonna, I'm, next year, I'm going to go to Moore Park High School. More park, not high school, college, and hopefully go to flight school at the same time. Um, 
Yeah. The UU community has, a, has, ha, has had a profound impact on my life and experiences. When I first walked through the doors of the Unitarian Universalist Church, I immediately felt a sense of belonging and acceptance. The community embraced little Noah for who I was without judgment or expectation. This acceptance allowed me to explore my spirituality in a safe and nurturing environment free from judgment or rigid beliefs. In religious education and church life, there are many things that I will cherish. The first is the emphasis on lifelong learning. UU religious education is not confined to childhood or adolescence. It is a continuous journey, journey that accompanies us throughout our whole lives. The church provided opportunities for intellectual growth, such as coming of age and owl, um, allowing me to engage with complex ideas and grapple with my own personal eth ethical questions. Another cherished aspect of UU religious education is a sense of community. The UU community is a diverse tapestry of individuals with different backgrounds, identities, and beliefs, yet we come together in a spirit of unity and interconnectedness. The community has been a source of support, encouragement, and inspiration through, through shared rituals such as all the various communions, celebrations, social justice initiatives, and we have built deep connections and created lasting friendships. The warmth and compassion I have experienced within the community has been very transformative. Um, so yeah, yeah, so in conclusion, the UU community has impacted my life in profound ways. They have fostered acceptance within my own religious education, intellectual growth, and provided a sense of belonging for myself and others. I will cherish the lessons I've learned through, through the UU community. Um, for, cherish lessons formed in the UU community through religious education and church life. As I journey forward, I will carry with me the values of inherent worth and dignity intellectual curiosity and a commitment to justice. Unitarian Universal Universalism will forever hold a special place in my heart and my mother's. <laughs> Noah and Amber and Charlie Thank you. Your words give life to this congregation as your very being has given life since you were quite small and came to us. I want to speak to you for a moment from the point of view as a minister. Now the world of you, you ministers is pretty small and I am very close to both women who have served this congregation since you came to us as young children, the Reverend Jan Christian and Reverend Dana Worsnop. And what I know, and what I know beyond any questioning, is the fierce pride and love that these two ministers feel for you, having had the chance to be with you during these years. And this is true even though Reverend Jan has gone from here, and Reverend Dana happens to be away right now. My own ministry has taught me that those of us who carry a special love for the children and youth of our congregation, as both your ministers do, is that no matter how many years go by, we remember you. We remember you and we hold our love for you ever within us. So on this day, Charles and Amber and Noah, and for all of your days, know that you are loved, you are loved by these ministers who have had the great good fortune to spend these years with you. You are loved, you are loved, you are loved. So we're gonna call up the three bridgers. And if you would stand up here. And if I could have uh, the advisors, Janice and David, join us as well.
Bridgers, as you bridge into the future and travel on roads near and far, we offer you gifts. Within each of these packages, there is a wooden travel chalice with a tea light, a chalice necklace, and a book called Becoming a Spiritual Guide for Navigating Adulthood by Kayla Parker, published by Skinner House. Oh, and I forgot, there are bubbles in there so that you remember to take fun with you wherever you go. You got it. <laughs> and you may, you may blow them. As we, <laughs> we will, um, before you and, uh, leave this chancel, we're going to say a blessing for you, um, upon you, and um, then we'll have our closing hymn where you will step, on that, step onto that imaginary bridge and make your way all around and return back here to represent that we are sending you off wherever you go and that you're always welcome to come back here as we sing the words. So we're going to do our um, blessing. I want you to take a moment and just look out here at these people. I want you to look back in time and remember the people you cherished who might not be present today, but who are with you still. This blessing, this blessing comes from every one of these people, from all of us together. May life bring enough challenges to fuel your dreams, enough affirmations to honor your gifts, and enough nurture to give your spirits peace. Believe in your visions, follow your dreams, and know, know always that when you return to us here, you will find friendship and you will find love. Oh, do you want me to introduce it? Because we, um, so we're going to have our closing hymn, um, and I'm not going to say what it is, but I, I hope that everybody knows it, um, because I know that it's a highlight. And um, as the Bridgers will make their round, we ask for you to sing the song. And if you're new here and you haven't experienced before, you're welcome to follow <coughs> the motions that are put into the song by those who know. So um, please follow as you are able to. And rise in body or spirit.
Please join me in reading the words on the screen as we prepare to extinguish our chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. Those we carry into our lives until we are together again. And I hope that you'll join us for coffee, tea and bagels, and conversation in Berg Hall. Uh, I think you're supposed to get your coffee and come back here for the uh, meeting. Okay. Okay, so you can only bring water back here, so drink fast. Uh, so you'll go through the community hall just through both sets of doors, and... Um, Perhaps you might want to at some point check out some of the work of the creative artist in the art gallery on your way out of the meeting. Um, and of course, you're encouraged to drop something in the offering basket as you leave the sanctuary today. Thank you for joining us. And our closing words come from Franny Lou Hamer, civil rights activist. Franny Lou Hamer. Okay. Never to forget where we come from and always praise the bridges that carry us over. May you go forth in peace. <laughs>